Hello my soccer universe. Well, <laughs> I expect this to be a black weekend for my teams and yesterday proved to be part one of that. Um, I decided now and I will punch them together to uh, do my weekly re videos of all that I watched in two parts because I usually forget on Monday what I watched on Saturday or even Friday so uh, maybe a little bit better to do it now while it's still fresh before I go into the whole craziness of watching uh, more wearing my new City jersey because City probably had the most impressive but not the most exciting result uh, of this um, Saturday um, yesterday Okay, uh, well, I didn't know all, all of our soccer. And in fact, I actually started watching the Rugby World Cup, uh, where it was an exciting game between France and Argentina. One that seemed to be decided at half for, in favor of France, but Argentina came back and even went the lead. The drop kick for France won it. Uh, New Zealand, South Africa was a little bit less exciting, although it was clearly the better teams. But, you know, South Africa had a lot of pressure early on, only got one uh, goal. Three points and then New Zealand quickly makes two tries and that was that. Uh, there's no way that New Zealand is gonna come back from that. But yeah, that was my early. And then I started watching Leicester Spurs. But honestly, only the first half because, you know, weekends is my time to recover. And um, I couldn't hold on for uh, too long. But um, so I only watched the first half, uh, really. But I saw... Uh, Really weird goal for Leicester being taken away for offside, rightly so. Then Kane made a really great goal, uh, falling, he puts it past Schmeichel. That was really an interesting one. However, in the second half, Leicester came back and uh, scored two goals and in the end uh, ran away as probably uh, deserved winners. With uh, Ricardo Pereira in the 69th and Madison to getting the winner in the 85th. So. When you saw what to watch for, I said, will Leicester deepen Spurs' trouble? And I was not necessarily re referring to last weekend's result, but more to the fact that they only got a draw at Olympiacos. And it deepened. It clearly deepened the, the, the trouble. So Spurs are a little bit an enigma at the moment. But let's see where, where this goes. Then, um, you know... 3.30, I thought, shall I watch the conference call between the Bundesliga? Because I had the choice. There was not really anything that interesting happening in Italy or Spain either. At least nothing that grabbed my attention. But then I flipped over there. I saw Bayern Munich uh, leading 1-0 against Cologne. Uh, Cologne. And the other games, honestly, I didn't care that much about. So I said, okay, Premier League. Let's see what City will do against Watford. I know the last time they played was in the FA Cup final. It was a 6-0. Uh, maybe Watford can hold on. <laughs> no, Watford could not hold on. Whatever good they showed against Arsenal last week and this weekend, uh, it was just annihilation by Manchester City. Absolute annihilation. I mean, after within two, two minutes, it was 1-0. I think after 10, it was 2-0. And after 20, it was 5-0. Uh, goal scored by Silva, Aguero a penalty, Mares in the 12th, Bernardo Silva in the 15th, Otamendi, who made this huge mistake last weekend in the 18th. Um, after 25 five minutes, I flipped the channel and I actually prepared my Champions League jersey review, which you will, you will get this week. I will uh, record the first two videos today and I will continue doing things so, and I hope by the end of in, in a week we're all done with the Champions League jersey review. The other goals again Bernardo Silva adding two more and De Bruyne in the 85th I mean absolute annihilation. Not exciting so I went back to Germany well Bayern Köln was not getting exciting I had a, had a 2-1 lead um, Leverkusen had a little bit of trouble as far as I recall uh, getting some, but the exciting one was Freiburg against Augsburg, where Freiburg with a win could have uh, claimed top spot. It was not to be a day in the last uh, 10 minutes. They twice hit the uh, woodwork, but never could convert. So, unfortunately, I would have loved to see Freiburg on top. I mean, that was actually the most important one. Hertha PSC getting a win. That was also a big result, I have to say. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, in the evening, I didn't want to go Bremen against Leipzig. In the 3-0 for Le Leipzig at that was not that interesting. No, I then went between Italy and Spain. And I started with Juventus uh, playing at home to Verona, where Verona got an early penalty. 
uh, and then a funny scene. I mean, the penalty hit the post. The rebound went to player who hits the bar. Then you th and at that moment, I mean, I was alone with really with my kids, and I said, I went, ah, ah, and I went out uh, to the kitchen because I wanted to, want to give that one. And then my big daughter said, but Papa, a goal was scored. Really? Yes. And then I saw the saw saw the replay and a wonderful goal at that. I mean, uh, Juventus could not clear. Uh, Verona came right back, and uh, then I think it was Miguel Viloso. Wonderful shot into in, in internet, make it 1-0 for Verona. Ramsey, 10 minutes later, deflected shot, makes it 1-1, and then a Cristiano penalty. Uh, seals the deal for Juventus. Verona had chances to get an equalizer, but it was not to be. So it ends 2-1 uh, for Juventus. I was then more focused on Atletico Madrid against uh, Celta de Vigo. But Atletico had chances, but was also having trouble with Celta de Vigo. I uh, didn't see the second half because I wanted to get the kids to bed. And concentrate on the two big games in the evening. It ended nil-nil. That, that, that was another points dropped for Atletico. And I think La Liga could be some upheaval this uh, coming still this weekend. There was upheaval already. But let's yeah, let, let, let's talk about it. I then put on the Milan Derby, which started 15 minutes earlier in Granada, Barcelona. Uh, let's talk first Granada, Barcelona, because I think it's the way bigger result. Granada getting... Uh, within two, two, two minutes a goal and Barcelona not really finding any answers to that, uh, to be honest. I mean, I did not pay full attention. I didn't even watch high, highlights now, but I saw from Wald, like I, I, I could see there was not much coming from Barcelona, to be honest. Um, also playing without Messi and without Ansu Fati from, from beginning, who came out at the halftime. But then uh, PK gave away a penalty. I think there was also a mistake by Ter Stegen, who just scraped off the, the ball off the line. Gets a penalty, it's 2 for Granada. Then Barcelona showed a little bit, but there was really nothing coming. And Granada deepens Barcelona's crisis, you have to say. I mean, two losses in five in the first five games, that's unheard of for Barcelona. So uh, the funny thing is that um, you have also the feeling that it doesn't really that much matter because Atletico's great start now also stalled a little bit, although they are still better. And we have to see what Sevilla and Real Madrid will do tonight. But yeah, my focus was on the derby and from the beginning I did not expect much from the derby. Uh, all the little hope that I may had had for a good performance um, or that uh, Inter might drop that ball was based on what they did against Lavia. But I know exactly how, how it is. They were with their minds already at that derby. Um, and it showed the first 20 minutes was all Inter and it was actually a miracle that uh, Inter did not make the make the goal, especially the one where um, a lateral shot was really a great save by Don Donnarumma, right at the feet of D'Ambrosio, who uh, four meters out hits the post. Uh, and the, I mean, there, there, there were many chances uh, where Inter should have found the breakthrough. Also, I have to say, great Tifos again. I mean, I think the Milan Darby in terms of Tifos is the best. I mean, the big sign with the uh, St. Ambrose uh, killing the snake, um, which is the Inter symbol. Then we believe in the red devil, uh, red and black devil. I mean, wonderful choreography on Milan side and also, also on the Inter side. was not a uh, uh, good one. I mean, I would love if both teams would, uh, both types of fans would go all out on both occasions. But it's, you, it's you, usually whoever team has the home uh, is that it's there, it's home to him, gets off the better TIFO, so it was this time around. Um, but it's always a sight to behold. Gotta be said, also liked uh, in the Milan box there was uh, Di Ronaldo, not the little Portuguese uh, guy, Di Ronaldo, and there uh, uh, was also Fabio Capello. You, you saw quite some, and even I mean, there were, there were lots of Inter fans, and I have to say, I mean. For all my dislike of Inter, we have Milan fan, but the Milanese derby is one where there's a lot of happening. You get each other in the stands, but other than that, the atmosphere between the fans is actually more a collegial one. It's kind of, um, yeah, they call it the, the derby of the cousins because it can be that in a family you have, it, it is not either you Milan or Inter. No, it can be actually quite mixed. So, I mean, that whole thing, once I realized that uh, in the past year, it actually softened my view on Inter a little bit. I don't. I mean, it's not like in Rome where I mean, it's pure segregation. If you're a Lazio fan in a Roma family, you're gonna be an outcast. So that's not happening here. So I find that kind of interesting. 
Then Milan scored a goal. And this is the, there are two things that bother me. I think, um, as we will see, Inter ran away deserved winners. I will, I will admit to that. But there are two points that really anger me. And one is a decision by the ref and one a decision by a Milan player. Um, so the first 20 minutes, all Inter. Then Milan scorer scores got a goal and, uh, the referee whistled the play dead because he thought that the ball hit Cassian on his arm. The ball goes to Chalanoglu and Milan scores. But see, because he had whistled before Chalanoglu could take off the shot, uh, he killed the game right there on the spot. And this is not what you do in VAR times. Let the game play out. And replays show he did not hit the arm. At least I couldn't see it. Yes, I have a red and black glasses on. Uh, so, um, yeah. But it did not... I, I'm convinced and it was contentious to me. You don't blow the whistle there. You have VAR afterwards. Then Inter got a, uh, a goal that was chalked off. I mean, first Ambrosio again, uh, a bicycle kick. He was just a hair offside, but I thought that uh, on the rebound, Martinez was offside, that this was actually clear, but they look, look, I mean, this was really... <laughs> uh, Piontek had a great chance and then Suso after corner. I mean, Milan had them for 10... 10 minutes, a little bit the upper hand. Then just when Inter was about to launch the second wave, uh, Suso ran a counter where he started in his own box and he ran all the way. The problem is that Leao, who had actually a great game, this was, I actually think he was the revelation to me in the, in the game, especially in the first half. He, this guy can, this guy is a good investment in the future. I hope he will stay and he will find the breakthrough in, in, this, uh, game, uh, in this squad. He may become a star. Uh, but Suso runs through and his shot gets blocked. The problem is he missed the chance. Leal was wide open on the wing. And if he plays it early, you have three on two. You have a three and two. You don't need to do it yourself. I think this was a glorious chance. Wasted. Absolutely wasted. Um, also, Piontek uh, had a... Yeah, Piontek Pion is a little bit off. I have to say, this is exactly what I, I, I was afraid of. So it ends nil-nil at the half, and I think the game had everything except goals. And the goals came, and then it was stupid Brozovic. It was a stupid free kick give him away. Then Brozovic uh, take, takes takes a deflected by Leao, and goes into it. I was furious. Then they made a review, and I thought maybe the offside will take it. But yeah, one nil. Milan couldn't find an answer once Lukaku in the 78th made it uh, two nil. It was clear that Milan's gonna win. Uh, Inter is gonna win. I see. I can't even say Inter's gonna win that one. Yeah, seven derbies Mi Milan has had has won. I'm depressed about that. So yeah, but for me, Inter. Okay, fair and square won it. I cannot bring myself to wear Inter today. I mean, I should probably, but I cannot. Uh, just not possible to me. But um, that's referee decision to whistle the play dead when Cassier had not played the, the ball with, with the hand is absolute nuts. And I also have to say that Suso didn't make more of it. Suso, a year, year ago, I thought he's great, but then he had such a rough spell and you can see, I mean, his signature move is taking and shooting it in, into the clouds or whatever. Um, Suso divides fans. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, so that was the Saturday. Today it's a big day, but we'll talk about this right now. Well, uh, Sunday was tad better, tad better. Wearing Roma to remind myself of the bonehead move of the weekend by me, uh, which was also the first game because I didn't watch any rugby uh, today. Should have Ireland Scotland was inter was interesting, but um, in the end. Ireland ran away easy, easy winners, and I was actually busy shooting videos. And yeah, so uh, first game that I uh, decided to watch was uh, Bologna Roma because uh, I thought, you know, Bologna is having a good start to the season, and they, ever since Mihailovic took over, they're actually a pretty nasty side to break down. And Roma also is, was kind of fun to watch. There yeah, was one of our, one of those teams that always scored and always conceded. First half was to forget there was not really much happening. I think there were two shots on goal by both teams, but it really kicked off in the second half. Uh, 
was a free kick at the edge of the box. Kolarov takes it and puts it beautifully into the net. Yes, the wall could have jumped, but you know, it's in. Kolarov was also involved in the second um, situation where he, um, about 10 minutes later, 5-10 minutes later, somewhere there, he caused a penalty that was then converted. So it's 1-1 Bologna and Bologna then had actually chances to uh, win it. There was even a red card given for uh, Roma. Rightly so, it has to be said. Uh, but Roma hang on. And then I thought, yeah, it's already Ajax PSV, going, uh, PSV Ajax, I should say, is going on. And I turned on to uh, the last Salzburg game. And I also have to say, he <laughs> was nicely cuddling on the couch with my wife. Uh, so I didn't. Wa I wanted to get everything done at once. Yes, and so I, in the ninety second, ninety third, I flipped over and I missed the winning goal for Roma, which happened basically with the last kick of the game where Jacko heads it home. Bon had moved off the just wait a half minute longer, and I would have seen the winner for Roma. But yeah, Roma now overtakes Milan, but. Um, I think overall Roma is having a positive start to the season. I mean, it's not the greatest uh, because you know you gave you gave up a lot, a lot, a lot of goals, but I think they're finding themselves slowly. So uh, that makes me happy. But I think for me it was not all about the other two games. Just checking, yeah, Roma hasn't lost their nine fourth place. About the other two games that were running parallel, the um, uh, PSV Ajax, horrible jersey matchup. Uh, I mean, PSV is playing at home nicely, but Ajax always, I mean, already last season, uh, gold with uh, black with the gold pants, I really didn't like, but this season, it didn't, it just doesn't work. It just does not work. The dark green with orange pants, uh, this is so similar to what PSV is uh, wearing with the red, white stars and the black. I thought this was a horrible matchup. Uh, color-wise. I didn't follow the match too closely because the Lusk game was then so enthralling, um, but I watched highlights and all I can say is that yeah, uh, Ajax had for the most time the better chances, um, with especially Promise needing to make the goal in the first half uh, to make it 1-0. Um, more chances in the second half, they then finally made the 1-0, but could not hang on, and Marlon for PSV, who is really in great form, got the equalizer and so the big clash in the Netherlands ends 1-1, which basically means also that on top of the table it's it still remains very very close between those two, which again seem to be the strongest teams in the Netherlands. Um, but the last game was the one that was really gripping me and when I saw it, I, I didn't give us any chance. I mean, we had the short rest, we had, uh, you know, we are solid, but I didn't like how we are going forward. Um, I think we were lacking there. Um, and then Salzburg was in such great shape that I didn't see Lask doing anything uh, against this gold machine. However, then you see the lineup and there are only three regulars for Salzburg starting. We have a chance. And yes, we did have a chance. Um, I think already in the fourth minute, Goeginger with a rare moment of brilliance. And I have to say, he is one of those that he's either brilliant or you want to damn him because he is, you can either see him selfish or a little bit too much into his... Um, uh, play uh, that he doesn't see uh, better opportunities but you know if he's on he's on and he was really on in that one uh, gets the ball and lobs it over the goalkeeper to make it beautiful 1-0 in the fourth minute and Lusk really pressured Salzburg uh, with a lot of effort a lot of um, high a high line not letting them get anywhere and this is rewarded with a second goal in the 18th minute uh, which I also didn't see because I helped uh, my family and my daughter wanted to learn some bicycling, so I got that stuff out. But, you know, I didn't mind that uh, at all because I, I, I saw that I was more happy about the 2-0. And at that point, you really think, wow, Salzburg going to lose points or even lose for the first time this season? It was in the brain. I knew you never count out Salzburg. And unfortunately, with the first real chance of the game, Dakar, 
makes it 2-1. I mean, just for a second you lose him and he runs and goes. He's one of those super fast ones. And yeah, makes it 2-1. Uh, Goigan could have made it 3-1 then, uh, but it was nicely saved by Stan Stankovic. In the second half, it was power play by Salzburg, but um, especially for the first 15 minutes of the half. But uh, Lusk's defense held. Um, and then they should have made the 3-1 uh, with Potsman putting the ball on the bar out of close range. Uh, if that's 3-1, that's the game. Um, still, Salzburg was a little bit shocked by that one because there wasn't another uh, chance, I think, by Klaus. Where a free kick was, was, wasn't given that on the other side, I think a penalty for Salzburg was involved, was, wasn't given Austrian refs. That's a whole different story. And um, war takes so long that we uh, 21. Uh, spring 2021 was the earliest that they think that war can happen in Austria, which I think is a, a, a tragedy in, it, in, in itself. And then one scene uh, where, I mean, now Holland is come, come, coming on, uh, uh, Mino Mino is come, coming on, so really uh, Sal Salzburg is bringing the goods. Uh, and our new defender, Filipovic, is then sent off with a yellow-red, which, yes, he was on the yellow and it's the second one where he, if he doesn't pull Popolim, I think it was again Daka who would have been through. So, uh, yes, so 15 minutes, 10 men, but seemingly it was holding. I mean, it was really tight. It, I have to say this was, I mean, my wife was really nervous, was nerve-wracking how they hung on, but in the 90th minute, Daka, that was just a combination too many. And he makes the 2-2. Salzburg almost won it in stoppage time. Uh, but I think the draw was the correct result. Fortunately, Lask loses a spot in the table because of that. But it was a gripping game. It was really, really a great game. Uh, and that goal by Goinginger. If that would have, if we would have won it, people would talk about that for ages. Last game, there was the small matter of... Uh, Chelsea versus Liverpool, but when I pulled over there, it was a return to Liverpool. However, I mean, the goal by Alexander Arnold was a really nicely taken one, uh, free kick. Then there was a goal not given uh, for Chelsea because of offside, but this was so many plays before that. Um, I understand it's the right decision, but uh, I don't know, something in me says they're taking it way too much back uh, for that. But okay. Uh, I think Firmino made a nice header, but uh, what I saw live was a beautiful goal by Conte, who gets the ball, uh, runs into the box, and then really nicely puts it in. That was a real great. That was, was a great goal. Chelsea then was really pressing to get the winner. Liverpool hung on, even though Batshuayi had a free header, should have made it there. I think a draw for Chelsea, based on what I see, I saw on highlights and so on. Uh, and also stats. I think a draw would, would have been deserved, but Liverpool continues the perfect start. Maybe this is their year. Maybe. Let's see about that. Uh, then I saw a little bit of Atalanta Fiorentina. I saw the second goal by Fiorentina, which was really nice taking by Ribéry uh, with uh, Chiesa. I love the play. Or I got the 1-0. Um, grabbed the ball, ran down, put a high cross in and everybody one time it in the internet wonderful Atalanta though came back scored two goals and made it 2-2 um, I then decided to watch a little bit NFL my Packers won again 3-0 and yeah uh, but to be honest I knew that it's gonna be get too late if I watch the two other big matchups uh, namely Sevilla Real Madrid and PSG at uh, Lyon um, just saw the highlights Real Madrid fought and fought hard and got a win through a goal by Benzema um, and PSG really outclassed in a way not I mean on the field I mean Lyon didn't have much um, chances the chances were all for PSG in the 87th Neymar surrounded by four players somehow finds the breakthrough and he again gets the winner for PSG well that was my watching weekend we'll have tomorrow I'll I'll give you the whole league roundup with all the big games happening all over Europe. I think the Saloniki Derby ended 1-1. Didn't check the other results yet. Um, so yeah, let me know what you watched. Drop a comment below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I also want to know what you thought about if you watched any of the games that I was watching and what you were thinking about those. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.